Uh, you got a law firm, 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 law firm. Hi guys, it's Matt here. How's everyone doing? I hope everyone's doing fabulous. I'm back with another video. And this time around, I'm going to be talking about not just the one shoe, but actually two shoes. Yes, it is a versus video between the Asix Metaspeed Edge Plus and the Nike Zumax Vaporfly Next Percent 2, which are surprisingly similar uh, to, to a lot of degrees, but also very, very different in, from, from other, sort of like from another perspective. So I thought I'm gonna, I'm gonna run through, you know, the basic specifications of the shoes, uh, talk about what the difference uh, between the, well, what the differences are between, between fit, uh, you know, the midsole, uh, the drop, the, the grip, and, you know, general running experience. And, and at the end of the video, I'm gonna basically make a recommendation about which one should you get for, for, for what purpose, really. So let's get right into it. So let's talk about the shoes and the specification of the shoes. Uh, both shoes cost the same, uh, and they're both available now to buy. Uh, this is uh, this is the uh, 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 one of the new colorways of the Vaporfly Next Percent 2, and this is the original col uh, colorway of the of the Edge Plus uh, because this is kind of like a very very new shoe, as you might know. You might have seen my review as well. Whereas the Vaporfly Next Percent 2 uh, has been out for a while now. Uh, it has quite a few colorways as well. Anyway, so both shoes are two two hundred and fifty dollars in the US and two hundred and twenty five pounds in the UK. They actually also both have the same drop midsole drop so the next percent two has a uh, an eight millimeter you know heel to toe drop same as the uh, edge plus but the uh, ne the next percent two has a 40 millimeter of foam under the heel and 32 millimeter under the forefoot whereas the um uh, the edge plus has a 33 millimeter of foam under the under the heel and 25 millimeter of foam under the forefoot so this one is, uh, you know, in the Ash Plus, your your foot sits very close to the ground or closer to the ground than in the and the next percent uh, two. That's something I'm going to talk about in in a, in a bit. They both are excellent running shoes. Uh, the the um, Edge Plus uses the FF Blast Turbo Foam, uh, which is again a, a, kind of like a relatively new foam from from Asics. Uh, it's slightly heavier, so this is a size 10 Asics uh, Edge Plus, and this is a size 10 and a half Vaporfly Next Percent 2. Uh, these are kind of like my sizes in these shoes. Both shoes uh, fit the same, uh, me anyway. Uh, and this is 231 grams, again a size 10, and a size 10 and a half is 228 grams, so the next percent two is slightly lighter, uh, despite it being half a size, uh, you know, half a size up. Uh, I guess it's because of the, the, the Zoom X foam, which is one of the lightest foam, you know, uh, on, on the market really still. And also, again, I'm kind of referring back to my original video about the Edge, Edge Plus. Uh, if you remember, ASICS made the shoes uh, tweak the shoes uh, in in a way that they didn't didn't reduce the weight from from the edge. Actually, they made it heavier uh, than the original edge. This is slightly lighter, although being bigger. Uh, if you look at the shoes, uh, they are also the next percent two is also um, kind of longer because of this protruding heel, uh, you know, heel heel part here. And in general, it just just looks bigger uh, than the than the edge plus, which is a bit more compact. Again, I appreciate obviously it's, it's half size under, but even without that, it just it just feels more, you know, more contained the uh, the Edge Plus. So before I go on to the, talking about like the you know the key differences and how they differ differ from each other, uh, I thought I'm just going to quickly mention what's changed from the previous iteration of the shoes to the new one. A lot of things has changed uh, since the original iteration, which was the Edge that came out last year. Uh, so basically everything has been changed, including the the upper, uh, the laces, uh, you know, how much padding is around the heels even the shape of the heel uh, and then the fit has been changed as well for the better and as i said the the uh, the the, uh, the midsole has been changed as well and the foam has been foam has changed as well and also the positioning of the carbon plate in the foam you got more foam uh, between uh, your foot and the carbon plate and the carbon plate sits kind of very very close to the ground uh, Again, ASICS kind of made this decision based on, uh, you know, athlete data and, and their own, you know, kind of like design as well. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I do love this shoe. This is, this is a, a brilliant shoe. 
uh, it's very fast. Uh, I'm going to talk about like a, a bit more about this very very soon. So I'm just not, I'm not going to spoil everything that I'm going to say in this you know kind of versus review of the shoes. Uh, instead, I'm going to be quickly run through what's changed uh, with the with the Vaporfly uh, Next Percent Two. The Next Percent Two made the heel a bit more stable, so it's a bit it's a bit wider. Uh, the forefoot has also kind of been redesigned slightly. The upper has been reinforced uh, in key areas and there is like more padding around, you know, as a, like a padded tongue now as opposed to in the previous version as actually as opposed to the, the ASICs as well. So there's, there's a, a, you know, the tongue is a bit padded now. Uh, so that's, that's, that's pretty good as well. And, but other than that, it's very, very similar to the next percent because really, I mean, that shoe is still very, sought, very much sought after. Very, very decent shoes um, overall. Okay, so now we've got the specifications out of the way. Uh, we talked about what's, what's, what's changed between the you know, previous iteration and the current iteration of the shoes. So let's talk about what's the difference between the shoes. Oh, sorry, I just hold it the right way. You know, the two shoes. Um, <clears throat> and let's talk about fit first, because uh, I think that's very important, uh, you know, from, from a from a running shoe perspective, I think it's something that we don't talk about quite enough. Um, and that's probably partially because people, uh, you know, have different opinions about what is a good fit, especially with uh, racing shoes. Uh, a lot of people will go very, very tight on, uh, on racing shoes. And, and even I myself appreciate a, a tight fitting upper, uh, but there is a difference between a completely uncomfortable tight upper and then a, a race fit upper because it, it's you you know if you if you if you're planning on running a marathon or even longer distances in a shoe you don't want them to completely you know suffocate your your feet because because that that's you know you, that's that's going to affect you know how you run if you if you feel completely uncomfortable uh, then then running is gonna isn't you know it's it's just not good for you so what you want is the right size uh, with an upper that that follows follows the, the form of your foot so it, it's reinforced it's supportive but not suffocating if that makes sense uh, luckily enough both of these shoes i um, i tried them on uh, and and they are very very similar in terms of fit uh, so the uppers like the, the synthetic uppers they both fit very very good very very closely in this section uh, it, it, it widens both shoe has a very wide like sort of four foot platform uh, which is great for me because I got a wide foot uh, and I wear uh, barefoot shoes very often so I like my my toes you know I like my foot to spread out if it can uh, but again I obviously I wouldn't want to run in barefoot shoes because I wouldn't want to kill my foot especially on, on you know on hard surfaces you know and tarmac uh, so these shoes have I mean I do like uh, the fit on both of these in a, in a very very comf uh, very very similar as well uh, the stepping comfort is also very very similar so you got uh, some some padding around the heels um, and I would say of the two maybe the next percent is marginally better uh, because of the padded tongue uh, and that's because that padded tongue makes the the, the lace cage uh, sort of like this area so the midsection of the upper sits closer to your foot without you know you having to tighten the laces very you know too much uh, which again something you shouldn't do as uh, either uh, as you might have seen in my uh, what not to do with running shoes video what was it called i think it was a running shoe mistakes video that i did uh, i think it had like 30 views so you know if you haven't checked it out please check it out i talk about lacing uh, lacing in there how to wear the shoes uh, anyway the next percent to is again ever so slightly marginally better uh, in terms of fit, but both of them are very, very good. Now we talked about the fit, let's talk about, let's move on to the, the bottom section of the, the shoe. So let's talk about midsoles. As I mentioned in the intro, the next percent two uh, has more foam uh, this, and, and, and is still lighter. Uh, so this is, a, this is a high stack, you know, like a classic high stack running shoe. Uh, you got a lot of foam, 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 Low foam, low foam under the under the heel. Uh, you got a lot of foam under the forefoot, uh, and then you got a carbon plate. So if you if you look at look at the coloring of the um, of the uh, of the you know the the midsole, you can see that the the carbon plate kind of curves quite aggressively, um, and there's a lot of foam under the forefoot here, under the balls of your foot, uh, which again makes it makes it I. The way I like to think of the Vaporfly is that like it's like a, like a wild horse, right? You got you got a lot of power to harness, but if you can harness that power, uh, then it will enable you to go very very fast. So there's a lot of fo foam on the foot with the next percent too, uh, and then the the carbon plate, the the curved carbon plate provides a lot of propulsion as well. But 
if you don't know how to run in this kind of shoes, you're gonna you're gonna have a you're gonna have a bad time basically. If you have an if you have the ankle strength, if you have the control, if you know what you're doing with your gait and your stride, uh, you will be able to to make make most of these shoes. Hence why they are so popular. So this this one preserves the leg more uh, compared to the Edge Plus, and we're gonna talk about it in just one second uh, because because of this foam because there's more you know there's less impact on the joints as you land and and if you manage to work the shoes right then then it will help you go farther uh, without without any issues without any you know without your legs tiring out uh, completely and then the edge plus so again there's less foam there's 33 millimeters under the heel and then 25 millimeters under the forefoot uh, and as I said, the, the, the carbon place is very, very close to the ground. Uh, there's more foam between the plate and then your foot. Uh, and it is also, I feel like it's slightly wider in general, like the platform that you land on. Uh, and this makes the, the shoes, it's so the, the ground contact and then the control, which is something I, I always look forward to in running shoes, is more present in the Edge Plus. So you got, you got this white platform it's super easy to change direction in the edge plus it's super easy to 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 switch up tempo and then that kind of turn tune down like straight away because because you you are in control of that stride again i would think that it is more the edge plus is also more uh, suited for beginner runners because again you don't have to control the you know the wobble on on top of a, like a, a massive stack height uh, and because it's wider and because it's more stable it's less of a pressure on the ankles and the joints in general. So the Edge Plus is definitely a, a more beginner friendly shoe, despite, again, ASIC's kind of aiming the shoes towards elite uh, like marathon runners, or at least people who can run a marathon under three hours, which is, you know, very, very fast. Uh, and and again, I'm not one of those runners, yet I, I, I love running in the Edge Plus. And uh, it's just, it's just such a, such a nice experience to, to be fully in control of how I want to run, and then the Edge Plus enables me to do that. Plus, it 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 also makes you run very fast, if that makes sense. Let's talk about toe spring. So that toe spring is that curvature at the front of the shoes. Uh, and interestingly enough, uh, both of these shoes have. I mean, I obviously I can't really measure it properly, but eyeballing them, they are exactly the same. So both toe springs are literally identical. Uh, which which kind of helps you with this rocker shape. It's not quite as rocker shape like the like the hawkers, the the Carbon X, or the new Adidas uh, Adi Zero Adidas Pro Threes, uh, which have like a super aggressive rocker shape. Uh, but again, they have like that the cutaway under the under the the little toe, which I I don't you know I don't like necessarily. Anyhow, that's a different story. Uh, so both of them have a have a similar similar toe spring, and because of the carbon plate. You, you have a, a great sort of rocking sensation with both of these shoes. Uh, and then uh, in terms of flexibility, the, the shoes obviously have carbon plates, so the, the foams themselves are, are soft. Uh, I would say that the, the, the ZoomX foam is softer than the, the FF Blast Turbo, uh, but because of, the, uh, because of the carbon plate, obviously the shoes are not particularly flexible, but again, that's the point because you want to you know, you want you want the carbon plate to sort of spring back to you know to to its original position to give you a bit of bit of you know like the propulsive power, and uh, if they were too flexible, then then that wouldn't happen. So you know you don't expect either of these shoes to be very very flexible in general. So how does it feel like to run in these shoes? Uh, let's talk about the Edge Plus first, uh, because 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 why not? So I'm going to be talking about the Edge Plus first. Uh, this uh, kind of mentioned this earlier. Uh, the Edge Plus is 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 a very uh, very controlled uh, very controlled shoe, or it can be controlled much easier than the uh, than the uh, the next percent next yeah the next percent too, uh, and even the original Edge. It's more comfortable than the original Edge uh, from a comfort level between these two shoes. It's very very similar. But, but because of this control, because of this ground contact, because of the ground feel, um, it, it, you feel more in control uh, of, of how you run. Um, and, um, and you know, you still got that bounce, you still got the carbon plate, uh, you still got the foam, and the foam is excellent. And then the other thing that, uh, something that we also don't talk about very, very often with, uh, with running shoes, and something I very appreciate in the Edge Plus, is the grip. So 
the uh, the outsole it has a kind of thinner outsole but but it just i think of all the shoes that i i ran in recently the edge plus has the best grip like hands down uh, and that because it has such a good grip it also helps you to move forward and again change directions and then change speed because because you don't you don't skid around you don't you don't slide you just like you grip into the ground and and that helps you preserve energy as well because you don't waste energy on you know on on slipping when you know when your foot is slipping uh, so that is uh, quite amazing in these shoes and something like i guess i didn't quite expect but now that i experienced it i'm like this is how i want my shoes to to behave on the ground so again overall super running shoes that's what the next percent do again it's something i mentioned higher stack height um so taller uh equally as comfortable uh it's super nice from a, from a leg preservation point of view so if i wanted to go for like a long distance you know to go the distance essentially uh, i would probably put on the next percent twos because because there's so much foam and then you know as as your as your legs get tired uh, you want you know you your form kind of starts to fall apart and that's when you you know you will start to land a bit harder and that's when you're gonna like you know your gait is gonna fall apart a bit as well and and these shoes can help you not basically uh, put too much pressure on your on your legs even when these that this happens uh, and then the next percent plus is something that like that that does that that job perfectly essentially so you know if you want to if you want comfortable uh long distance running shoes that are also really fast like the next percent two is probably one of your best options essentially uh, and um and again the grip is grip is very good as well maybe not quite as good as the as the edge plus um but um but still very very good again the fit is really good and because of the wider forefoot section as well uh, compared to the you know the original vaporfly uh, next percent um it's it's also despite it not being quite as stable as the Ash Blast, it's still very, very stable or, or more stable than it used to be, uh, which I think, uh, you know, helped, helped the shoes tremendously and how you can run in the shoes. The midsection is still very narrow, so be mindful of that. Uh, but with the wider forefoot, it's, it's easier to level out, um, you know, your gait when you, just before you, you know, just before you, you know, toe off essentially. Uh, so, you know, great for that purpose, really. Now for the big question, which one should you get of the two? Uh, I, I'm running a 10K race very, very soon, actually, in less than a week's time. Uh, and then for that, I'm definitely gonna be using the Edge Plus. Uh, so anything uh, up to a, a half marathon distance, uh, even if it's a race, I'm gonna, be I, I'm gonna choose the Edge Plus because of the, because of the control I mentioned earlier, uh, because of this comfort. And, uh, you know, this, this really, fits my running style better than, than super high stack running shoes. If you've got a 5K race, I would probably go with the Nike Zoom X Streak Fly. Uh, for anything between 10K and half marathon, that's the Edge Plus. And then marathons I would probably do in the in the Wave of Fine X percent, or, or probably the F5 twos because I really like those shoes as well. A review is coming very, very shortly. Both very, very good shoes. Uh, and again, they cost the same. So I guess if you, if you race, you know, half marathons and marathons, maybe go with this one, uh, considering the same price. And then if you're more of a 10K half marathon runner, the Edge Plus is a, is a better option for you. I think that's, that's my verdict, really. So that was it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, if you like this video, please leave a like. Uh, there's more reviews coming. I've got the F Fly 2 uh, review coming very, very soon. And I also got a couple of headphones, actually. Uh, so I've got the Amazfit Power Beat, Power, no, not Power Beats, that's the, that's the, the Beats Power Beats. It's, the Amazfit Power Buds Pro, uh, which I was quite surprised actually, because uh, these buds not only, you know, provide a good listening experience and look very similar to to AirPods, uh, but they also like have this uh, posture correcting uh, mode as well, or not mode, but like the, it, it monitors your posture, uh, and also uh, like have like a heart rate sensor in it as well. So this is like. So much more than just a, a just a just a pair of running headphones. Uh, so I'm going to be doing a review of this very very soon. Uh, I've got the Alpha Fly uh, Fly 2 review coming very soon. I've got the new um, other pair of headphones as well, and plus the Hocker Mach, Mach 5 Mach 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 5. Anyway, the new Mach 5 Mach Mach Hocker Mach 5. 
I'm gonna call it Mac 5. Anyway, so that's coming very, very soon as well. So stay tuned. Uh, this week I'm gonna be doing three videos because I only did two video, uh, sorry, one video last week because it was my birthday. So I was like, well, I'm not gonna do a, a video on my birthday. Um, so I'm gonna be catching up this week with three videos and then going forward, there's gonna be two videos again, at least anyway, from next week. So if you're interested in more of these, please subscribe as well or consider subscribing and obviously like this video because it means a lot to me. So thanks a lot, guys. Uh, I'll see you very, very soon. Bye.